everybody and welcome to week four of the Fab Five series. During the Fab Five, we're looking at five fabulous prophets from the Old Testament. A prophet was someone that could see into the future and God would show the prophet what was going to happen and then the prophets will tell the people what God showed them. Today, we're going to hear about a prophet named Jeremiah. God sent Jeremiah to the two southern tribes, the nation of Judah. But like a lot of the prophets, Jeremiah didn't have a lot of luck turning the people back to God. Talking to people of Judah was kind of like, well, was kind of like this. Hi, my name's Michelle. I'm Jeremiah. Who are you? High five. No, maybe you didn't hear me. Hello. Hmm. Let me try that once more time. <clears throat> Hello. How are you today? Hmm. How rude. Have I ever mentioned that you have really good posture? You're so tall and straight. You kind of remember remind me of my favorite movie, Wally. -E. Hello. Oh boy. Oh, I saw some pictures the other day. They said that they were hanging with ya. Huh? Nothing? Nothing. For Jeremiah, talking to people of Judah was like talking to a wall. Nobody listened to him. Nobody did what he said. And because of that, Judah suffered the consequences big time. So are you ready to see what happened in our true story? Awesome. Let's get started. You will need to get out your comics sheet, Jeremiah and the Fall of Judah, and you're also going to need something to draw with. Remember, if you need a little bit more time on something we ask you to draw, just pause the video, finish your masterpiece, and start when you're done. Here's Doug. <laughs> Hi kids, hi grandkids, nice to see you again. In the first panel one, I need you to draw a king. All around the borders of Israel and Judah, powerful nations are rising up and they are looking for new lands to take over and to conquer. Now, because of their sin, the nation of Israel has already by, been conquered by their enemy and now the evil, nasty Babylonians are looking to conquer God's people in the nation of Judah. There's only one thing stopping him though, and that is the king of Judah has agreed to remain loyal to the evil Babylonians and pay them money in exchange for peace. But the king of Judah is getting tired of paying and now he's talking with other nations about going to war with those powerful Babylonians. God though, he has other plans. He sends a prophet named Jeremiah to confront the king of Judah. When Jeremiah shows up, he's wearing a large yoke on his neck. Now, and a yoke is a wooden beam that farmers put on their necks of their oxen to control the powerful animals. Jeremiah tells the king, God has given you over to Babylon because of your wickedness. Babylon has put this yoke of power on your neck and now they control you like a wild beast. If you accept the yoke and serve Babylon, you will live. But if you don't serve Babylon, you will die. Any prophet who tells you differently is a liar. So now on panel one, I need you to draw a broken yoke on the floor. Now there's another problem in the room though. A false prophet by the name of Hananiah, he grabs the yoke from Jeremiah's neck and smashes it on the ground. Hananiah shouts, no, this is what the Lord says. I will break the yoke of Babylon and you will be free of their control. But God didn't really say that, and he's not too happy with Hananiah. So he gives Jeremiah one more prophecy to share with the audience. The Babylonian yoke is made of iron and not so easily broken. I have given them control over the wild animals, and I will give them control over you too. And as for you, Hananiah, because of your lies, you will die this very year. Unfortunately, Jeremiah is alone in his warning and no one will listen to him. 
Even when Hananiah dies two months later, the king of Judah doesn't want to believe Jeremiah's prophecy. So what he does is he continues to conspire with Egypt to wage war with the Babylonians. When the enemy of king of Babylon hears about the conspiracy, he's quick to attack Jerusalem, just like Jeremiah had prophesied. The only things that will keep the Babylonian army from a swift victory are those massive giant walls that are surrounding Jerusalem. Now, what we need you to do is to draw Jeremiah sitting on the mud on your panel number three. While the walls hold uh, the Babylonian army in, at bay, the soldiers of Judah, Judah search for Jeremiah. Even though it's the sin of the people that has caused this calamity, the people of Judah call Jeremiah a traitor and they blame him for all the bad things that are happening. So when the soldiers find Jeremiah, they grab him, throw him into a dried well, and they leave him there to starve. He's alone in the dark. Jeremiah sits really hungry in that nasty, gooey, stinky mud, and he is going to wonder if he'll live to ever see light again. But God hasn't forgotten about Jeremiah, and he moves the king of Judah to show him mercy the king has Jeremiah taken out of the well and placed under house arrest where he remains guarded until. <laughs> One day, two and a half years of fighting, the great wall of Jerusalem comes crashing down and the Babylonian soldiers come rushing in. The fighting men of Judah are absolutely are no match for the fierce Babylonian army. Soon the city is set on fire and the remaining wall is broken down. I now need you to draw a fire in the city and broken down walls in panel number four. Then the enemy soldiers steal all of the gold, all of the silver, all of the valuables from the temple and all of the palace buildings. Worst of all though, the people of Judah are made prisoners and forced to leave their home. Everybody, with the exception of the really poor of the poorest people, are taken to Babylon where they become servants to that really powerful enemy nation. But God does not allow harm to come to Jeremiah. Jeremiah's reputation has reached all the way up the top to the king of Babylon. The enemy king has heard about his faithfulness to God and is about his effort and, and about his efforts to keep Judah from rebelling. So the king gives orders that Jeremiah be kept safe. Jeremiah is invited by the powerful king to live with lots of money, lots of wealth, and lots of honor in Babylon. But instead, Jeremiah chooses to stay in Jerusalem to help the poor people who are still there. Although his life has been spared, Jeremiah finds little happiness in it. He weeps for the destruction of his beloved nation and its people. He cries out to God, the city once so full of people is now deserted, there's nobody here. Because of Judah's great sin, her enemy is now her master. This is why I weep and my eyes overflow with tears. There was no one to comfort me. He felt really bad. Whoa, what a huge bummer. Jeremiah tried to warn the nation of Judah for 40 years without any success. It was like talking to a wall. Can you imagine how frustrated he must have been? Actually, it was more than frustrating, it was sad. That's why Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. He had so many things to cry about. In fact, Jeremiah wrote an entire book. The book is called Laminations. The name Laminations comes from the word lament, which means to weep or to cry. Okay, let's see if we can come up with all of the reasons that Jeremiah had to lament. He has he was discouraged. Mm -hmm. No matter how hard he tried, nobody would listen to Jeremiah. He was lonely. Yep. Everyone had turned their back on him and deserted him. He was also in trouble. The soldier falsely arrested him and threw him into an empty well. And worst of all, he was devastated. The nation he loved had been destroyed and the people had been taken away. Jeremiah must have felt like he was being crushed with sadness. I actually have a story of what made me feel really sad. I took my favorite stuffed animal to go watch my friends play soccer. And you know what happened, Fernanda? No, what happened? 
I lost my stuffed animal. Oh, no. I searched and searched and I couldn't find it. I was so sad. You know what, Fernanda? Yeah. I even cried. Whenever things happen to us, it's easy to feel like we're being crushed by sadness. I agree with you and we are kind of this little kin. When really sad things happen to us, we can feel kind of empty inside, like all of our joy is gone. My hands are kind of like the sad things that happen to us. The sadness sits heavy on us and keep us feeling like kind of down. And when the sad things just keep on happening, it can feel so heavy that it breaks our heart and crushes our spirit. But the Bible says that it doesn't have to be like that. Let's, see, let's take a look. So kids, open your Bible to the book of Psalm, uh, chapter 34, 9, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and close to those who are crushed in spirit. When we feel overwhelmed by sadness, God is close to us. This jar is kind of like God. It's clear, so it reminds us that God is invisible. We can't see him, but he is always here. The jar is also strong, which reminds us of God's power. And when we find the sadness is coming down on us, God is close and the sad things just keep on happening. But God saves us from being crushed. And Jeremiah felt sad. God was, God was right there with him. Mm -hmm. He kept Jeremiah from being crushed by the sadness and he gave Jeremiah hope that the sadness would one day pass. And do you know what? God does the same for us. It's okay to feel sad. Just know that you're not alone and that God will save you from being crushed by the sadness. Know that you can pray to God and ask him to help you find your joy again. And best of all, know that for those of us who follow Jesus, God has promised that one day we will live with him forever in heaven where there are no more tears and no more sadness. Let me pray for us. Father, we ask that you would be with us and our grandkids, and we just ask that you would bring back their joy, that you would protect them from the sadness, and that you would ensure that they know you are right there with you. Amen. Kids, we would love for you to subscribe for the December box mm -hmm. if you haven't already. So it's going to be really exciting, and be sure to fill out your challenge cards and do the activity with your family. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Bye.